Hello, in today's video I'm going to be talking about and going over some of the advantages of the Clipper 3D printer firmware. So for those familiar with the channel, you know I'm a big fan of Clipper as the firmware of choice for my 3D printers. In fact, all the printers you see in front of me, all six of them, do run Clipper as their firmware currently. Now Clipper has been around for a few years now, and really in the past year it's made some really good leaps and bounds to the point where I feel confident saying that it is my favorite firmware for 3D printers, and I definitely recommend it for those that are looking to upgrade their printers from stock firmware or they are doing a self-built printer and they're looking for some variant of firmware to run on their printer. Now when it comes to running Clipper on your 3D printer, it does have many advantages and there are some things you need to keep in mind when it comes to installing it. There are a few minor disadvantages to it, but no firmware is perfect and I'll cover both the advantages and the disadvantages in this video. So starting off, what is Clipper and how do I install it on my printer? Well, Clipper is a standalone firmware for your 3D printer. What this means is it doesn't run on top of Marlin, such as an Octoprint on a Raspberry Pi. It completely replaces your printer's built-in firmware. You will have to reflash your controller board, but it still uses a Raspberry Pi. Now, how Clipper works is the actual firmware that does all the computation and the math involved in the kinematics and controlling your printer is all handled on the Raspberry Pi itself. This lets you have a much more powerful controller running your printer and the built-in controller in your printer, in this case here, an SKR Mini, this, all it does is handle the instructions sent to it from the Raspberry Pi. What this allows you to do is run things like older hardware, such as this old ramps board here, at step rates that would be unattainable with the 8-bit built-in MCU controlling things. And it allows to push newer hardware, such as SKR boards, for example, with their 32-bit processors, well beyond that even 32-bit Marlin can handle. Now, for those familiar with Octoprint, you may be worried about bandwidth limitations when it comes to communicating. However, you do have to remember with Clipper, all the computation is handled on the Raspberry Pi itself. So interpreting the G code and understanding it and carrying out the commands is all handled on your Raspberry Pi. All that is communicated to the MCU on the controller board itself is simple commands, basic instructions, move here, do this, do that. There is no processing being done on your controller board. So a basic USB connection is plenty. In fact, I run printers that run on a Raspberry Pi Zero, which with Clipper and its lightweight interfaces, there's much less overhead in terms of processing power needed. And a Raspberry Pi Zero can run Clipper just fine, even on advanced printers. But with my Raspberry Pi Zeros controlling printers over UART, which is an even lower bandwidth interface, there is zero issues with latency or bandwidth saturation. So you have no worries about stalling out your printer by sending too many complex commands in a short period of time. That can sometimes happen with Octoprint sending G code over USB, for example. So that's how Clipper works. Why should you run it? Well, running Clipper has many features that can be advantageous to anyone who has a 3D printer. Now I will include a link to the Clipper website that does break down these into more further detail along with all the instructionals on the GitHub. However, I'll go through and list some of the major features here on why you may want to run Clipper on your printer, whether you are building a new printer or flashing over an existing printer to the Clipper firmware. So one of the first things, and I've already touched on it before, is the fact that Clipper can take older hardware and make it run at a much faster rate. So for example, an old 8-bit ramps board is capable of doing over 100,000 steps a second when running Clipper as its firmware versus the meager approximately 10,000 that it can do on an 8-bit Marlin installation. And for modern 32-bit systems, such as SKRs and Duet 2s, you can potentially get over 600,000 steps per second. Now, depending on your printer build and your slicer settings, you may never need that high of a step rate. However, if you are running systems that have multiple steppers running at once, such as on my Voron V2s here, where I have four Z motors and then an XY and extruder, when all those are running at once at high speeds, those do push the step rates quite high. Also with some of the features that Clipper has, you're able to push your machine faster and harder than some other firmware. So having that little bit of overhead there will definitely be advantageous. Now, when it comes to setting up and configuring Clipper, it does have web interface capabilities, whether through Octoprint or its standalone interfaces, such as Fluid or Mainsail. However, I do recommend if you don't require any of the add-ons that Octoprint has, running one of the dedicated Clipper interfaces, 
At this time, they both have roughly the similar features. At this time, both of those do have pretty much the same features, and it's a kind of a personal preference on which one you go with, but they both function exactly the same way. And the major advantages are, you are able to edit your configuration settings and firmware through their simple user interface through your web browser. And for updating firmware on Clipper, it's simply a matter of adding or adjusting some commands to your configuration file, saving, and hitting the restart button. So for example, here on my Ender 3, if I were to add a bed probe to it, such as an inductive probe that plugged in through the existing Z end stop, I would simply have to just add some commands to my configuration, saying that my end stop Z is now a probe, and these are the parameters I want it to run with, and hit save restart, and then I would have a bed probe. Now, another great feature of Clipper is multi-MCU support. What this means is you can control as many controller boards as you can plug into a Raspberry Pi. So when it comes to multi-MCU support with Clipper, I got this little demonstration set up here on how it could be a cool thing to use in your printer and why you may want to use it. So let's just say, for example, this is a Raspberry Pi 3B. It has four USB ports. And my controller board here, let's say it's running a Core XY printer with a single Z motor. So you wanna go ahead, you wanna try that three point bed leveling that's all the raise right now. So unfortunately your control board here isn't gonna support two more Z motors. Now with most standard firmwares, you can only run as many steppers as there are on the controller board itself, or you have to buy a specialized board with an expander board such as a Duet with its expander or the GTR with its expander. And those can be pricey options and they're not as common. Well, with Clipper, you can just go ahead and plug in another controller board. So I have this fly board here, it supports four steppers. So what you can do is simply flash firmware to it, plug it into your Raspberry Pi, and then you go into your configuration, you assign it as a second controller board, you put your three stepper drivers on it for your Z, and now you have a controller board for your Z and a controller board for everything else. And that's it, you would just wire it in normally at that point. Now, when it comes to special firmware settings that Clipper employs, the two most common ones are Pressure Advance and Input Shaper. Pressure Advance is a way of calibrating your extruder to adjust flow based on the elasticity of filament and its compression within your Bowden tube. So for those running systems that have long Bowden tube setups, such as on my Voron switch wire here, or for those that want to maximize print quality of even standard direct feed setups, being able to tune your pressure vents with a simple macro and test print in one or two prints is a welcomed feature and does lead to much better print quality. Now, Clipper, Marlin, and RepRap firmware all have pressure advance. Marlin calls it linear advance. Clipper, though, is the only one that has smooth pressure advance. Smooth pressure advance does not introduce any instantaneous extruder velocity changes. Smoother extruder movement improves overall print quality, leaving prints with sharper corners and less oozing, and it does avoid common pitfalls, such as working in stealth chop mode, where this can cause issues with linear advance in Marlin, for example. Now, one feature that is specific to Clipper itself is called input shaping. Now, what input shaping is, is being able to cancel out ringing in your printer from vibrations. And what this allows you to do is run your printer at a higher acceleration setting than you used to be previously without any harmonics causing any ringing in details on your print. Now it can accomplish this via two methods. You can do a calibration print and manually go in and measure and adjust based on how the print turns out and using some calipers to measure out the defects. Another option though that Clipper supports is actually attaching an accelerometer such as an ADXL 345 to your printer's tool head, plugging that into your Raspberry Pi, running a script that runs some various frequencies through your printer's movement, and then using the measured output from that to adjust the settings to compensate for the vibrations induced by certain movements of the printer itself. Now a real world example of that, my Voron V2.4 here does have input shaper enabled and tuned on it, and I'm able to run at speeds up to five to 6,000 acceleration and have the same quality that I was getting with speeds around two to 3,000 acceleration. Now this allows your printer to run much faster and much more efficiently because it, you're able to take advantage of faster mechanics without potentially having to deal with any of the downsides of printing faster such as ringing. Now other features that may entice you to use Clipper as your firmware of choice, it does run on Python. So being able to add features such as additional 
kinematic support for different styles of printer. It's a relatively simple procedure as long as you know the math and you know how to program Python. It does have support for PT100 probes, so the higher temperature, more accurate bed and hot end probes are usable with Clipper. It has thermal runaway, of course. It supports all the common TMC stepper drivers through their various UART and SPI controls. It supports all the common bed probes, such as the BL Touch inductive probe. It supports multiple tool heads, such as IDEX printers or in tool changing as well. It understands G-code from all the common slicers. Now, of course, it also supports multiple styles of bed leveling, such as bed mesh leveling or adjusting your gantry or bed level itself with multi-stepper systems. And my favorite feature is the fact that it's constantly being developed and new things are constantly being added to it. For example, the accelerometer control has been a recent addition to it. There's work on bringing plugin support to Clipper at this time. There's two in development standalone interfaces to it. And the whole environment is constantly evolving with new things being added to it regularly. So as somebody who's been using Clipper for over a year now, being able to watch it grow and expand is something that is great to see. And of course it is open source and there are a lot of community features in it as well. Now there are a few things you do need to keep in mind if you decide to run Clipper as your firmware of choice for your printer. Now, the main thing is you do need a separate board to plug into your controller board to run Clipper. Now, most people do use the Raspberry Pi and it is the board I recommend. Clipper can run on all the Raspberry Pis. In fact, I have two printers here that run Clipper on Raspberry Pi Zeros. These low power processors are great for running Clipper by themselves, as long as you do not need a webcam and you are using the standalone Clipper interface. Octoprint can be a bit bloated for it and a webcam does have a tendency to bog it down. But if you are looking for something to simply run the printer remotely and run Clipper at the same time, it does run fine on a Raspberry Pi Zero. You can of course also install it on any system that I believe can run Linux. Um, so you could theoretically use like an old computer or some of the other system on a chips. However, it is much easier to install it on a Raspberry Pi as there's pre-made images to do that. And by going to a more powerful system, you don't really gain anything either. For example, my Core XY printer here on a Raspberry Pi Zero barely hits 20% CPU usage under full load while this printer is running. So if you're not maxing out a Raspberry Pi Zero, you don't really need a beefy $200 system on a chip to run Clipper. Now, when it comes to controller board support for Clipper, uh, it does support most common controller boards out there. You can take a look at the Clipper GitHub to see if your specific printer or controller board does have an example configuration. If it does not, you can take a look and see if the MCU itself is supported with Clipper. That's the actual processor on your board. If the processor is supported and you're able to flash to the board, and you know the pinout of the board, you are able to make a configuration for Clipper. So for example here, um, my taller Voron V2 here runs on a custom controller board developed a little while back called the Taco Raven. A smaller one here, V226, this guy runs on a Duet 2. My switch wire has an SKR 1.3. This has an SKR Mini V2, an SKR Mini V1.2, and this Ender 3 here is running the stock Creality 4.2.2 controller board. So Clipper does support many different styles of MCU, many different controller boards. So if you are looking to install it in an existing system, most common printers are already supported by Clipper and do have example firmwares to help get you started. The installation process on the Ender 3 here is only about a 10 to 15 minute setup. Now, unfortunately, no firmware is perfect, and there are some things that some people would consider downsides to running Clipper as their firmware on their printer. Now, the first thing that most people will encounter is the installation of Clipper itself. It has gotten much easier over time, especially with the standalone images based on Fluid and Mainsail, which install to a SD card pretty much the same as Octoprint does. So if you can handle installing Octoprint, you should be able to install Fluid or Mainsail, no problem. Now, when it comes to setting up the firmware for the control board itself, you do need to configure it specifically for the controller board you're gonna be flashing it to via an SSH terminal. So you do need to use something such as PuTTY to SSH into your Raspberry Pi once Clipper is installed, and you are gonna to have to go through and adjust some settings. Now these settings are readily available for the most common controller boards out there, so it's simply a matter of copy and pasting and selecting the settings it tells you to. However, you do need to generate that file and some controller boards, such as the SKR series 
or the controller board in the Ender 3, for example, you do need to go back into the Raspberry Pi and pull a file off of it. I use WinSCP, for example, and then take that file, put it on an SD card, and then flash it to the controller board. So for those that have never used a terminal interface before or done some scripting, um, so while it is relatively simple, for the most part you're following instructions and just copying and pasting commands, it can be daunting for those that have never done something like this before. But if you are having trouble installing it, there's plenty of guides out there. There's a community as well you can reach out to. Now another thing is with the standalone Clipper interfaces, at this time there is no full plugin support. So if you do require a plugin such as Spaghetti Detective or the Time Lapse plugin built into Octoprint, you are going to have to run Octoprint to continue using that. However, you still can run Clipper, it's just going to be through Octoprint. You won't be able to use the standalone interfaces developed specifically for Clipper. Now another issue that comes up quite often, and this may be a minor issue for some or a major issue, is screen support for Clipper. At this time, Clipper only supports screens such as the basic graphical interfaces, such as the 12864 that is common with most 3D printers, or any other display that plugs directly into the controller board itself and sends a signal to the controller board. Displays that run their own firmware, such as the Creality Ender 3 V2 display, which runs its own firmware, which sends commands to the controller board, are not supported by Clipper at this time. Now, the panel do display is a little bit of an outlier. The dis this display is common with Duet printers, and somebody has gone ahead and written a plugin to let this communicate through the Moonraker API that Clipper uses, so you can't control a printer with a panel do. But for example, at this time, if you have, say, an Ender 3 V2, once you install Clipper, this screen, you might as well take it off and put it on the shelf because this screen cannot talk to Clipper. Now there is another option for those running Clipper that do wish to have a touch screen on their printer, and that is using Clipper Screen. Clipper Screen is an in-development add-on that gives you the ability to use a touch screen plugged into your Raspberry Pi to control your printer. So I hope you found this video informative. I wanted to put a video out there because I do constantly get questions about Clipper itself, and I felt like doing a quick breakdown of some of the key features of Clipper, why you may want to run it, and some things to keep in mind would be quite beneficial. If you do have any questions, again, ask them in the comments below. If I need to, I'll do a follow-up video on this subject. Now, I have done Clipper installs on my channel before. I have a video on how to install Mainsail, and I've done it on streams multiple times, but if you would like to see an installation video on the Ender 3 V2 itself, let me know in the comments below. If you like the content such as this, make sure you hit that like button. And if you want to see more like this as well, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. If you would like to support the things I do and support the channel, there are links in the description as well. So I hope you learned something new. I hope you give Clipper a try if you're interested in running it. And as always, thank you and have a nice day.